welcome to the class dear students today we are going to study sn1 reaction in this video we will discuss what is sn1 reaction it is a subcategory of nucleophilic substitution reaction so we will discuss nucleophilic substitution reaction first then we will see the reaction or sn1 reaction then we will see the mechanism we will discuss about the orientation and lastly we will discuss about reactivity so let us start sn1 reaction sn1 reaction is an example of nucleophilic substitution reaction now which organic compounds so nucleophilic substitution reaction yes alkyl halides that is alkyl halide shows nucleophilic substitution reaction which can proceed through any of the two mechanism it can either proceed through sn1 mechanism or it can proceed through the sn2 mechanism in this video we will discuss about nucleophilic substitution reaction and we will also discuss specifically about sn1 reaction so let us discuss about nucleophilic substitution reaction now to understand nucleophilic sub substitution reaction consider the reaction of tertiary butyl bromide with a nucleophile such as oh minus now what will be the outcome of this reaction to understand what is the outcome of this reaction we should we need to understand the nature of the reactants involved oh minus is a pakka nucleophile and this that is tertiary butyl bromide it is a very polar organic compound why it is polar because it consists of 3 r 3 alkyl groups they all pump their electrons to this carbon and this carbon in turn pumps its electron to br br also is electronegative in nature it pushes the electron towards itself and therefore this compound becomes a highly polar compound and a very big dipole exists between them dipole means a side of it is negative and the other side of which is positive this is bound to dissociate and br minus is therefore bound to go and to this that is ch3 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 c plus OH minus is bound to attach. So, what you will get as product? Tertiary butyl alcohol. Tertiary butyl alcohol. What has happened in this reaction? A nucleophile such as OH minus has replaced another nucleophile that is Br minus. That is therefore nucleophilic substitution reaction. So, dear students, now we have understood how a nucleophile has substituted another nucleophile and how it is called as nucleophilic, why it is called as nucleophilic substitution reaction. Now, let us discuss about SN1 reaction in particular. So, SN1 reaction is a type, is a mechanism of NSR or nucleophilic substitution reaction. Let us now see what is SN1 reaction. The full form of SN1 is, you have to start from the back, reverse, unimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction. Unimolecular nucleophilic substitution reaction. What do you mean by unimolecular? The term unimolecular means it is dependent only upon one molecule. I am going to draw tertiary butyl bromide, the molecule that we took for reaction. It is dependent upon only one molecule. Okay, what do I mean when I say that it is dependent only upon one molecule? What I mean to say is that it is dependent on the character, the chemical character of substrate. What chemical character? The chemical character to participate in the reaction. That is the chemical character to ionize itself. On that only the SN1 reaction depends upon. Dear students, today when I was taking the class, I said to my students that if I assign you one work 
and if i say that this work depends on you then what do actually i mean to say then i mean to say what i mean to say is this work depends on your preparedness on your character how fast will you complete it how soon you will start it that all depends on your preparedness your character in the same way sn1 reaction depends upon the character of the substrate the character to ionize therefore the rate of sn1 reaction is a function of the concentration of the substrate it only depends upon substrate higher the substrate higher the ionization greater will be the rate of reaction so that is the basic of sn1 reaction to understand much better the mechanism of sn1 reaction we have to look into the mechanism itself let us see sn1 reaction has two steps step number 1 is ionization of substrate ionization of substrate now what is a substrate that we had taken in the reaction yes your tertiary butyl bromide so this is the tertiary butyl bromide as you can see there are it's a very highly polar organic compound and why it is so i have already explained and because of this high polarity this side will develop as negative and this side will develop as positive and what would result br minus would go would dissociate it is bound to do so and the result will be a carbocation right the result would be a carbocation this is a it has three groups when there are three groups it assumes a triangular shape because that is the farthest position at which the groups can be uh, placed so it assumes a triangular shape it is also planar so it's a planar triagonal carbocation planar triagonal carbocation right okay so now the carbocation is formed now what should it attack what is the other thing in the system oh minus oh minus is a nucleophile so it would attack the carbocation so that is step number 2 step 2 attack of nucleophile attack of nucleophile you can write full let us see the carbocation that we got in step 1 this is the carbocation it's a planar carbocation now it can be attacked by oh minus which is the nucleophile now oh minus has the uh, possibility it has two options it can either attack from back side which is option number one and uh, or it can attack from the front side option number two what if it attacks from the back side what product do we get let us see cs3 a wedge shaped dash okay so we get a product like this and what if and what if it attacks from the front side what do we get let us see we'll write it here cs3 oh cs3 cs3 so these are the two <coughs> products that we get they are one and the same thing that is we get tertiary butyl alcohol 
if OH minus attacks, it doesn't depend whether from the front side or from the back side, what we get is a tertiary butyl alcohol. Dear students, that ends up the mechanism. Now, let us discuss on the orientation of SN1 mechanism. By orientation, what do we mean? We mean where the OH group will be directed onto. Where the incoming nucleophile, OH minus, the incoming nucleophile, where it will be directed to. Whether it will be directed to the front side, whether it will be directed to the back side, and what kind of product we will, will we get. So that is what we are going to discuss in orientation. As you can see, this OH minus can attack from the front side and from the back side. This is front side attack, this is back side attack. So in both sides, from both sides it can attack. And if it attacks from the front side, what you will get is retained product. This product has same configuration as that of reactant as that of tertiary butyl bromide, the reactant that we started with. So this configuration is a retained configuration. It is obtained if OH- attacks from front side. If OH- attacks from back side, what we get is an inverted configuration from that of our reactant. What was the reactant? Tertiary butyl bromide. Just opposite to that, a configuration we obtain. So that is inverted configuration. So in SN1 reaction, OH- can attack from both sides, either from front side or from back side. If it attacks from front side, we get a retained product. And if it attacks from back side, we get a product of inverted configuration. So both kind of products, we can get retained product and inverted product. Now the question is, which one would we get more, right? which is preferred, which one would we get more? I say that we get backside attack product more. That is we get the inverted product more. Why so? Because see this is OH minus. If it is going here on the front side, BR has just got dissociated. It's just dissociated, but it is still there somewhere in the vicinity of this carbocation of this positively charged carbon. It is still there, somewhere in the vicinity. So there is chance, there are chances of encounter of OH- minus with BR if it approaches from front side. There are chances that BR- minus would meet up OH- minus and that OH- minus would come back and it may attack from back side. Okay, so there are no chances here, there is nil chance. Okay, but there are chances here that BR may be still there, somewhere in the vicinity of positively charged carbon atom. And because uh, there are chances of encounter, OH- minus usually takes this part. Okay, so if, if at all it takes this and if at all BR- minus is still here, it would come back and take this. Okay, and more of the uh, inverted product will be formed. So that is the orientation of SN1 reaction. Now we will discuss about reactivity of SN1 reaction. So what do we mean by reactivity? By reactivity we mean, what we mean to say is which of the tertiary alkyl halides would have a higher probability to undergo SN1 reaction. There is a tertiary alkyl halide, there is secondary alkyl halide, there is primary alkyl halide which one of these would have a higher probability to undergo SN1 reaction? That is what we are going to see in reactivity. For this, we have to see the stability of carbocations that are formed. Okay. So before discussing the stability of carbocation, let me remind you that SN1 reaction, what is formed? Iron is formed. There is ionization. So, in SN1 reaction, ionization is prerequisite. That is, without ionization, SN1 reaction cannot be formed. So, those substrates which can form ion or which undergo ionization or those substrate where ionization is favored, only those substrates will have a, a higher probability to undergo reaction through SN1 mechanism. 
I hope I made myself clear. For SN1 reaction, you have a prerequisite is ionization. Only those substrates which can show ionization, they can only undergo SN1 reaction. Now, let us discuss about stability of carbocations. Stability of carbocation. I am going to draw the three carbocations and then we will see the stability. This is the tertiary carbocation which I am going to draw first. Tertiary carbocation. Secondary carbocation. And primary carbocation. Okay, can you tell me dear students which of these carbocation is stable? Yes, you are correct. The stability of tertiary carbocation is more. Right? Why? Because the three R groups pump their electron okay, to this carbon and that greatly reduces the density of positive charge here. Here there are two methyl groups. So, uh, they will also reduce but not as much as this because there is a one extra methyl group. Here, it will reduce but not as much this or as much as this. It will be the least. So, here the tertiary carbocation, the positive charge is reduced drastically because there are three methyl group and therefore tertiary carbocation is the most stable among all. Most stable among all. Where does the tertiary carbocation come from? It comes from tertiary alkyl halide. Okay. It comes from tertiary alkyl halide. And uh, um, which molecules, what is the prerequisite of SN1 reaction? They have to form stable ion. Right. Prerequisite is ionization. Okay. And car because tertiary carbocation is much stable, Ionization of tertiary alkyl halide takes place. It is favorable. Because tertiary carbocation is very stable, ionization of tertiary alkyl halide is favored. And therefore, tertiary alkyl halide would undergo SN1 reaction. I hope this is clear. The second factor is, the second factor that determines which alkyl halide would undergo SN1 reaction is steric hindrance. Steric hindrance. Let us discuss steric hindrance also. I am going to draw the three alkyl halides here. This is the tertiary alkyl halide. This is the C to which it is attached. And here we are getting the bromine. Now I am going to draw secondary alkyl halide. This is the C to which these are attached and there is a bromine here. Now I am going to draw primary alkyl halide. Okay. This is the primary alkyl halide. Tertiary alkyl halide has three bulky groups. Three bulky groups. Secondary alkyl halide has only two bulky groups. And primary alkyl halide has only one bulky group. Now, nucleophile is OH minus. Right? Now, just look at this case. It can only attack tertiary alkyl halide. Otherwise, it cannot attack because there is much steric crowding here. There is no space to attack carbon. Okay. It can only attack when Br goes from here and when it forms an ion. Just and this alas, the ion has formed and ionization is prerequisite of SN1 reaction. So, therefore, this is a tertiary carbocation. Therefore, tertiary alkyl halide undergo SN1 reaction. Let me repeat it. Tertiary alkyl halide, there is no space for OH to attack it. The only option is the Br has to go. If Br goes, positive sign comes, right? And then only OH can attack. So this kind of situation arises in tertiary alkyl halide only. And this kind of situation, if it comes, it will undergo SN1 mechanism. Therefore, tertiary alkyl halide undergoes SN1 mechanism reaction. 
dear students i hope you have understood the class and you have liked the session if so do not forget to subscribe the channel thank you very much